This is going to be a review of the Black Magic Design Intensity Shuttle. The Intensity Shuttle is a video capture card and video playback device. It gets its power from the USB 3 cable instead of relying on a third party power supply that could get damaged or could get lost. The input and output options are identical. You have S video, composite, component, and HDMI. You also have stereo RCA input and output for audio. The intensity shuttle only works with broadcast compliant frame rates, resolution, and aspect ratios. Most people purchase the intensity shuttle for its playback capabilities. If you're editing video that's 1440 by 1080i, an interlaced video clip will look better using broadcast compliant hardware then it will look just using your computer monitor. The Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle cannot work with odd frame rates, aspect ratios, and resolutions. I have a tutorial that shows how to use Premiere Pro along with the Intensity Shuttle to trick the Intensity Shuttle into working with odd aspect ratios. I'll try to provide a link. I also have a video capture video where I capture VHS and Hi8 tapes using the Intensity Shuttle. I'll try to provide a link to that as well. I want to say that as of 2018, I think the Intensity Shuttle is obsolete. I think Blackmagic Design should discontinue it. I'm glad I've got mine, and it's been really useful for me. But the main reason I think it should be discontinued is because it's 2018, not 1998. Back in 1998, most people saw a video that was done professionally at a post-production house. It was usually up to broadcast quality standards. Now with social media like Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo, a lot of us are seeing videos that were edited on somebody's laptop. They don't have to be broadcast compliant anymore. In fact, most people want to do stuff outside of the realm of broadcast compliant frame rates, aspect ratios, and resolutions. I think that the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle should be discontinued and it should be replaced with a Media Shuttle Pro, something that could record any aspect ratio, any frame rate, any resolution, and play back any aspect ratio, any frame rate, and any resolution. Blackmagic Design tries to promote their video capture products at the National Association of Broadcasters Convention. That's the target market that usually buys their products. I think if they did offer the Media Shuttle Pro that I suggested, they could market it at YouTube conferences as well as gaming conferences. People that are doing gaming videos, people that do YouTube videos, people that do live streaming could benefit from a video capture card that could do any frame rate, any aspect ratio, any resolution. This would open up Blackmagic Design's products to a whole new market. They could not double or triple sales, but they could easily quadruple sales. I think it'd be beneficial for Blackmagic Design to look outside of the broadcast arts realm because, as I stated, a lot of us see probably 75, 80, maybe even 90% of content that is just created on the internet and doesn't have to worry about broadcast compliant you know, specifications. The world's definitely changing. I think Blackmagic Design could make the Media Shuttle Pro similar to the Intensity Shuttle, although I'd probably rather see it black and gray than black and white for color, but that's besides the point. On the opposite side where the USB 3 connector is, they could have the RS-422 connector to have control over tape decks, and they could also put a breakout box on the other side. I think it'd be a good idea for Blackmagic Design to start thinking about making better hardware for people that are into gaming and people that do YouTube type videos, people that want to do live streaming. I don't doubt there are some people that would rather have them make two different versions, one with the RCA HDMI type connectors and then another version that had XLR and BNC connectors. They could do it that way. I just thought having a breakout box would allow them to just make one product for the home user and the professional broadcast arts user could use the exact same product. But if they made two different products, that'd be fine. I have some criticisms concerning the capture capabilities of the Intensity Shuttle. 
one of the biggest complaints is that it can record into motion JPEG, but it will not let you record it two to one compression, three to one, five to one, 10 to one. It's set at its own compression ratio. I believe it's probably about five to one. That's my guess. I also want to let people know that motion JPEG can give a really clean image if you record it three to one, but H.264 can give a really crisp, clean image and use a fraction of the hard disk space that Motion JPEG will use. If you went back in time 10 years ago, a lot of people would prefer to edit with Motion JPEG as opposed to H.264 because most computers 10 years ago couldn't play back H.264. It was too hard on the CPU to actually play back H.264 video codecs. But in the year 2018, things are a lot different. And they should have hardware on the Media Shuttle Pro if they do come up with a new product in another year or two that would have hardware encoding right there on the actual product. I know Intel has their QuickSync module that's part of the Core i3, and Core i5, and Core i7 architecture that does help encode and decode H.264 video codecs. If they implemented some kind of chip as, you know, an extra piece of hardware, they could raise the price, obviously, by $25, $35. But I think it would be in their best interest to have an onboard chip to record to H.264. It seems to be the go-to video codec in the year 2018. It's kind of like what Mini DV was back in the year 2000. It's very popular and it works very well. A laptop wouldn't have the computing power to record 8,000 lines of resolution by 2,500 lines of resolution. That's why I think it does need the hardware encoder on there if you're going to record the H.264 video codec. I want to say that the Intensity Shuttle has a hard time recording VHS tapes that are 10, 20 years old that were recorded with VCRs from Best Buy or Circuit City. The Intensity Shuttle wants a good, clean, broadcast quality signal. The VHS machines really aren't going to do that for the most part. Some of them will probably record just fine with the Intensity Shuttle, but I want to warn people, this is not a good product to buy if you want to record VHS tapes. You're probably only going to be able to record about 1 out of 20 VHS tapes. Where my Canopus 80 VC110 can record any of my VHS tapes that are 20, 25 years old that were recorded with an off-the-shelf VCR player from Best Buy or Circuit City. I would like to think the Intensity Shuttle would have an option in the control panel, a checkbox to check home recording quality or broadcast quality. I know some people might be wondering why I don't just use one of my computer monitors for the graphic user interface of Premiere Pro and then use the second computer monitor as a client preview monitor. The reason being is I do have clients that have interlaced video and if they give you an HDV video clip that's 1440 by 1080i, it's an interlaced timeline, it's a lot better to see it on broadcast compliant equipment than to watch it on your computer monitor. If I have a client that needs me to edit some VHS tapes for them, it's a lot better to see those timelines and sequences on the old CRT monitor than on your computer monitor. I like the capabilities when using Premiere Pro with the Intensity Shuttle to be able to view my drone video clips on the old CRT monitor as well as view 4K video clips from the RED1 camera. I also want to state that Premiere Pro tends to play motion graphics better using third-party hardware than it does on the computer screen. I do want to say it is great that the Intensity Shuttle does get its power from the USB cable, and I think it's great that Blackmagic Design offered a USB 3 video capture card for the broadcast professionals. The Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle lists for $199. It's well worth the price of admission if you have to do work for clients that are going to be broadcast over the airwaves. This is going to end my review of the Intensity Shuttle. If you want more information, feel free to watch some of my other videos about the Intensity Shuttle.